Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show today, part two of State of the Collection. So in part one, I looked at my divers. Today, I'm gonna to look at aviation or pilot's watches, if you prefer. Uh, now, a quick disclaimer before I get into this, and I'll do wristwatch check in just a moment when we switch perspectives, but I wanted to say, if you want to have a look at any of the watches featured, I have extensively re reviewed all of them. So have a look back at the archives. This is more, my own personal journey, so to speak, over the year. And I can't believe it's been a year since the last one. And I actually, I think it makes more sense doing it once a year. So this is about my loves, my loathes, my perceptions on each watch. Have they changed? Um, which have gone, which have stayed? So without further ado, let's roll the intro and then get into this video. <laughs> And as you can probably tell by the, uh, the World War II newspaper, this is actually from, I think, from 1945, if I remember correctly. Um, actually, it might even be earlier, but uh, yeah, it's a genuine newspaper from uh, the war period. Uh, and as you can tell by the planes, yeah, I'm doing aviation and pilot watches today. I should do a quick wristwatch check before I get into this. I am wearing the Henry Mark III. Uh, the two-tone there with that gorgeous dial. It, it does look rather enamel. Um, somebody said that actually and pointed that out and I, I totally see what you mean. I don't think it is unfortunately, but it does have that lovely kind of rich creamy texture. Um, those applied Roman numerals, absolutely adoring this. And, and I must admit with an aftermarket Jubilee, finally my <laughs> my dream is complete. And strangely, I'm enjoying it much more than the, the Henry Mark I and II. So I'm getting that Bateman vibe, don't touch the watch, um, perfectly with this. Also, uh, this is my Song Mic 8 uh, slot. Actually, let me just move that a bit. This is my Song Mic eight slot case, a very cheap and cheerful from Amazon. There'll be a link to it in the comments. No, not in the comments, what am I talking about? In the description. Uh, it's about 17 bucks, I think 20 bucks. This is actually my second one. The first one deteriorated, <laughs> just disintegrated. Uh, but that's what you get when you pay for, uh, you know, cheap and cheerful. But I have to say it is, the zip is rather terrible, but, um, you know, you get what you pay for. Oh yes, and I almost forgot before we get into uh, the pieces that are or have remained, I should cover what's gone and not forgotten. There we go. So I'm using snaps and yeah, immediately you'll see the old marathon is gone. I gave it away as a gift. I just wasn't wearing it. I adore the watch, but it wasn't really getting the wrist time. Also, yeah, I know I'm going to get a lot of criticism, but the Chronospace, I did a video recently in the summer professing my undying love, but I bought it to experience a luxury Annie Digi watch, which I haven't really um, had serious wrist time. I had to put the money towards my grail. Um, so I'm already purging the collection. The Fortis, well, that hasn't really gone because I've bought the same watch again, just a different version which you'll see in just a moment. Uh, what else is there aviation wise? Um, ah, the, the Navi Harbor. Yeah, that, that went a while ago. I bought that to review basically. Um, cracking watch, loved it. But yeah, that, that, that wasn't really getting the risk time either. But anyway, enough rabbiting on, uh, let's carry on. And by the way, um, I've just got to open this without knocking the camera, sorry. There we go. Ah, so here we go. Where should we start? Um, let's start over here with talking of Fortis, the Fortis official cosmonaut chronograph. Oh, the, the screw down pushes are un, un, um, undone. Actually, you know what? While they're undone, let me just start that chronograph because 
you'll notice this has something very, very special about it. It's the Lemania 5100 version. So it's a little bit older than the previous 7750 based version I had. To track these down now is getting really difficult. So this, I think, was the early 90s. Um, do correct me if I'm wrong. I, I did review it. It's got this absolutely tooltastic, rugged appeal and to its detriment sometimes because it's it's something you have to wear casually i mean this is such a tool watch but the lemania is unique because as you can see the minutes is displayed with that jet fighter style minute hand which is just so cool so as it counts over the minutes it will go around the dial much more legible much more efficient and and just a, such a great way of of representing the complication i wish more chronographs did this uh, day date tachometer technically it's a space going watch but originally obviously um it was designed for pilots uh, i love that texture on the dial it's such a a great everyday watch because you got you know, my favorite complication for every day, the day date. Uh, had this had a GMT, it would just be the do it all watch. And the 24 hour indicator where I think the minutes on the, uh, on the previous version were, or success, I should say. Let me just check on the back um, what number this was. 127 of 300. So very, very rare. Yeah, try and find this uh, Speedmaster, this <laughs> this rare. This strap, if you're wondering, don't ask me where I got it. I, I also bought from Japan. This is Japanese SWAT team camo, uh, camouflage. Very, very cool. And it just suits the utilitarian, kind of military-esque vibe of this watch. I just wish these, these hardware were brushed to match it. I grabbed it for an absolute bargain. I took a risk because I sold the previous version before I actually bought this because I was a little bit, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to overspend. So I'm glad I got this version. Sorry about the fluff. I, I really need to get new gloves. They are on the way, by the way. <laughs> what I love about this is that the neon orange has not faded. It's something that is a bit of a risk about buying these used, uh, especially the, the older Le Mania based version. I just love the way you can see the International Space Station and the colors. It's just so fun, you know. Um, and and this, this really killed off the Speedy. I, I, I haven't lusted after the Speedy for a while. I mean, I always do again, but this is just so much more special to me after visiting the Fortis factory in, in Switzerland, seeing these being made, well, the modern equivalent. I fell in love, you know, and, and I just feel that much more personal connection to this brand. Their history is so unique, really historic. I love the layout, the, the fact that no numerals have been cut off. But my only criticism of the Fortis is it's a chunky one. It's a chunky monkey indeed. I'd love it to be a manual wind and you know, even more slender. I, the diameter 38 is perfect for me, obviously. I have to say, I think the Fortis is probably the most fun to wear. I haven't been wearing it that often in the summertime because I was really scared of the uh, the sunlight fading the, the, the beautiful colors there. Um, so certainly gonna enjoy it much more in the um, autumn and winter. And I think it's fun because it has a playful nature to it. There's certainly a part of me that's a big kid at heart. The sense of adventure that this watch gives is priceless that captures the imagination that essentially well at the end of the day it just makes you smile and that's what it should all be about watches should be fun that is the most important thing i mean if we don't enjoy these things what's the point you know actually let's just sorry i almost forgot let's just reset that that chronograph boom there we go the lamania yeah ugly as hell probably one of the ugliest movements you'll ever look at but it's just so cool. Uh, where should we go on next? Oh, good old flighty. Dear old flighty. Oh, and I I, <laughs> I knocked the, the pusher, so it's going. This month actually marks the fifth year anniversary since I posted the original review of this, which uh, I dread to look at because it's probably hopelessly uh, rudimentary. But yeah, it was my beta watch at the time and still is in, in, in many ways. The amount of complexity and detail, I, I, I love the, the fit. Actually, let's just pop it on, hold on. There we go, look at that. It was as if it was built for my wrist. 
uh, that domed hard legs. Some people criticize. I, I think hard legs gets a bit of a bad rap. I think it's really great. It's held up incredibly well and I've dropped this. I've punished this. I haven't even replaced the battery. So it's well exceeded its um, life expectancy. I love all the detail. I mean, amazing utility in this piece. The, um, the oh, and there you see, I just engaged the um, split chronograph function. Now, I erroneously said that it's a, uh, a mecha quartz uh, several times even though I should know better it's not it's just a straightforward quartz but it does have that mechanical-esque one-fifth of a second sweep to the um, chronograph seconds so you do get a little bit of that um, mechanical vibe even though it is not unfortunately uh, I forget what movement I think it's the seven what was it the 7062 or something yeah, I probably got that wrong, but anyway. You have an alarm, which actually uh, is more of a reminder than an alarm. I, I would sleep through this. It's not very loud. Uh, but you can set the subdial there to a second time zone, as I have there, which is incredibly useful. The bi-directional scales of the bezel um, actually has a really good action to it, which I must admit, it's, it's not ratcheted to do anything. I've used it to calculate tips on a, <laughs> on a bill. That's about it. That's, that's to the extent of an actually, uh, of, of the usage. But, you know, I just like the look. I'm a sucker for the look. What can I say? A lot of people don't like its busyness. I love it. People say, oh, it's, a, it's, uh, kind of a, a ripoff of the um, the Navi timer. I d I disagree. It's got its own personality. That love that inner chaptering as well with all the markings. Astonishing a, a level of detail. Applied logo, um, but it's it's not without its shortcomings. Far too closely put the the um, spring bar to the case. Uh, on a purlon like this, which by the way is from Ulit. Uh, I got this from Holbens. Um, you can't get this particular color on Amazon, so you have to go to Holbens. This is fine for, for this, but if you've got a thick Zulu strap, it's a real pain. Uh, what other things do I not like about the watch? Well, yeah, it's 21 millimeter lug width. Why any person would ever design that into a watch is just irritating. I think this is a 20 or a 22, I can't remember, but... Yeah, it's fine. You either go a little bit too large or a little bit too small. So it's it's not the end of the world, but cracking watch. It's funny, when I first did the original review, nobody wanted to buy these, nobody wanted to touch these. Five years later, they've doubled in price. Seems to have um, gained a cult-like following, which I'm glad more people are discovering just how wonderful it is. It's a 41 millimeter size, so it's it's a crowd pleaser. Um, there are other speed, there's an, even an automatic Speedmaster. I've done a video about it. Speedmaster, oh my God, did I say Speedmaster? Sorry, Flightmaster. Freudian horological slip there. <laughs> 200 meters water resistance. I mean, it's a tough, tough cookie. It's that doodle watch. I adore it. I mean, I've, I've rabbited on, banged on about this watch for, for donkeys, just how amazing it is. So um, yeah, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to shut up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's pop it back in. Oh, and by the way, guys, before I forget, I will do a, a follow-up. I think five years warrants. I want to do a new review on this, actually. I want to talk about it a little bit more. So we'll come back to that. Uh, okay, next. Oh, another, another favorite, another channel favorite. This is actually the second time I've, I've bought this watch. Uh, this was a rebuy. It is, of course, the Zin 104. 41 millimeter size, uh, Sulita, what was it? 220 based, and it's got an exhibition case back. It's actually decorated, we've got blued screws, custom gold rotor. Even the second time I bought it, it's performing within cask. Again, a bit like the Flightmaster, it shares this uh, kind of toughness with the with the screw down crown and a 200 meters of water resistance the precision of this piece is i mean it's so german zin as you guys know relatively new in the whole scheme of things but uh, amazing amazing brand they've achieved so much we've got the day date complication i love the the syringe hands and how they reach and really 
accurately display the time the angular lugs it's oh, it's amazing and i've got it on a one of my favorite collareb straps this is actually and it's it's so aptly named because it's it's called the uh the firenze and as you guys know well you might not know but I lived there for two years. I first met my wife in Florence. So Florence is a very special place to me. Wonderfully distressed. And I think it kind of matches the monochromatic um, color scheme wonderfully. And what can I say? I mean, there's a reason I <laughs> re-bought it, you know? What could I criticize about it? Well, you know, some people do criticize it for just having a, a, a rather ubiquitous silita in there. However, you know, they, 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 they have modified it, they have regulated it, they've decorated it. It's affordable to maintain. Obviously, I'd love it to be 38 millimeters, but again, it pleases a lot of wrists uh, and I, I can still get away with it. The ratcheting on the, the bezel is not the best in the world. It's bi-directional. Some people don't like the fact that it's a countdown. Having said that, oh, sorry, it's misaligned. I don't mind it. You get used to it. It's actually quite useful for like day to day, but cooking and stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's only Achilles' heel, really, is 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 the uh, the action on it. I mean, it gets the job done. It's sixty click. I would, with almost certainty, say it's the best watch around thousand dollars. I think it's about twelve hundred. If you can ever find them in stock, they seem to be always out of stock, and justifiably so. It's an amazing watch. Yeah, let's just pop it on the wrist for old time's sake. And there we go. Yeah, still a great fit. I love it. Its monochromatic scheme is incredibly, uh, it's an absolute strap monster. And I must admit, it doesn't really feel like an aviation watch. It gives me that vintage Seamaster vibe, not Seamaster, vintage Submariner feel uh, often. It, it kind of does that. And I like the fact that it's a little bit worn. It needs to be bashed about and punished and, and really enjoyed. It's one of those watches where you kind of start wondering, well, why do I, <laughs> why do I need any other watches? You know, it doesn't have any of Zinn's famous technology, but I, I, I still think it for value for money, it is absolutely incredible. Oh, and by the way, guys, this strap you can get on my Amazon, which will be linked down below. You can get it on Holbens, or if you're in Europe, you can order it straight from Collareb, their website. Uh, they are fantastic. Um, so shout out to Fabio at Collareb. Still my favorite, without a doubt, luxury handmade straps. Can't beat Collareb. Anyway, let's move on next. Ah, the Rolex GMT. Oh, now it's caught in the thing. Whoops, come on. You'll notice it's off the Jubilee. Well, with the arrival of this, I've decided to put it back on the bracelet. This actually belongs to my Explorer. Uh, because the bracelet that this version came with wasn't as good as the slightly later Explorer. I Don't ask me about the numbers. I have no idea. I could, <laughs> could care less, to be honest. So yeah, it's, it's nice to have it back on the Oyster. I've had this uh, for several years. The, the, the Zin I've had, I think, oh God, a um, couple of years now. I love the Pepsi color scheme. What can I say? The 3185 movement. It's never missed a beat. Uh, very accurate, very comfortable. I love the holes case. Um, much prefer it to the new GMT Rolex brought out this year, which I have reviewed. There's not that much more to say about this watch. Would I pick it over the, my sub? Yeah, most probably. It's very worn. You'll see like scratches and dinks. I don't mind the, the scuffs and marks. I really don't. It's not perfect. I, th I do feel that the crown is undersized, which is something I prefer on the newer one. Also, what else? What else? I love it to be a flick smaller, but I could say that about every single watch. Maybe a little bit played out. I don't know. That's not really a criticism. <laughs> I'm really struggling now. To me, this is this is the ultimate GMT. It really is. Um, you know, you could completely disagree with me, but that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. And I have actually finally taken the sticker off. I just, yeah, it was getting a bit manky and, yeah, you know, so... Um, Give it a clean. Anyway, let's let's crack on. KBO, KBO. Now to match the background, yeah. This piece I just celebrated uh, one year anniversary. This is a very very special piece. So if you saw the video I did about discussing Amiga's amazing watches, this is actually called, and then you see it there, the Spitfire watch, 
although it was intended and worn predominantly by um, the crews of bomber aircraft. Ah, those, those blued hands, the poire star blued hand, the aged dial, it's just magic. And not only that, I've since discovered that this case is the Denison case, uh, which is made in England. Denison, well, I've discussed it in the video, so it's even a, that much more special, knowing that some of it was made in the country of my birth. Its provenance, its historicity, it's just unbeatable, and hence why it was Omega's uh, finest hour. This is not going anywhere. You guys know I've owned many Seamasters, many Speedmasters. I mean, more than most have had hot dinners, and yet this has remained, and those tend to come and go. Um, because there's just some magic, there's something special. There's, there's a, there's a, it's, this is a important part of history, and especially having family that fought in that conflict on both sides. I look at it and I'm reminded of their sacrifice. I'm reminded of how pivotal that conflict was and how much it still affects all of us to this day, the modern world. It would have been a very different place. And I was inspired last year by the Dunkirk movie and then, then I started looking at Amigas from that period and I just fell down a, a, a very enriching, interesting rabbit hole, so to speak. It has just an inimitable character that it's just ravishing to behold and yeah it's patina beyond belief and some people don't like it but i don't care it's 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 so unique this particular amiga has become almost like a dress watch uh, that i wear on very special occasions its size uh, is perfect for that and it's a great conversation piece because you can just go into all the rich history it has. I was even considering buying one in, in better condition, but it just didn't have that charm that this has. So hence why it's stayed and while so many have gone, you know. My imagination often wonders and thinks, oh God, the stories this watch could tell, you know, because only 3,000 of these were made. I think it was 3,000, I might be wrong. Have a look back at that video. But not a not not a tremendous high amount, so definitely saw some action, which is really really cool. Okay, next, um, a very inexpensive watch, the the least expensive of the bunch, the Seiko Five. This is the um, oh, and I didn't even mention the movement, the thirty T two. I mean, it paved the way for the the Seamaster line. If if it wasn't for the accuracy and the and dependability of these movements that you know, continued way into the 60s, they wouldn't have had opened the doors and made Amiga the reputable brand it, it has become, um, or it became rather. I mean, they already were, but it really, it, obviously, it, it um, changed a lot of things for the brand. Criticisms of, of, of my little Amiga, well, to be honest, it's beyond the criticism. It's it's a veteran, you know, it's it's earned that <laughs> it's earned that respect. It's beyond the criticism. Anyway, let's move on. So back to the Seiko SNK. I bought this to to review, to uh, to make videos with, and I ended up kind of just wearing it, enjoying it on, on various Seiko Saturdays, and it's just remained in my collection. Unintentionally, wonderful, wonderful watch. Little 37 millimeter, that was 33, I think. Unusual B-style, Flieger B-style dial. Um, Seiko did actually produce watches for the Japanese Air Force during World War II uh, with very distinctive dials. Have a look at the Kamikaze watches, very interesting. But this is an astonishing little watch, amazing value for money. I mean, their, their price has fluctuated. I think it's just supply and demand. We've got the 7S26 with the magic lever system, real piece of horological history, great functionality, all in-house, in which is just phenomenal. I've kept it because I'm going to mod it. I haven't really decided what to do yet. I just, to be honest, I haven't really had time. Just enjoying it as it is, to be completely frank with you. Day-date complication, which is very useful. Uh, I love the sandblasted case, it gives you that Thule vibe. And I've got it on the official Urban Gentry, the, the Valor strap, uh, which I think is completely sold out. Um, not sure if we're going to do it again, but uh, the, just a match made in heaven. Yeah, the Kipper's Knickers when it comes to affordable watches, the gateway drug, you could say. Uh, shortcomings, well, you know, people criticize it being too small. There's a bigger version, I forget the reference, but I've 
you know, I've talked about it at great length. Yeah, it's actually going. I haven't worn it. Some of these watches I haven't actually worn for a while. Give it the sake of shuffle. Okay, and last but by no means least, the Navi timer. Yeah, um, well, I like to think of it, the, the Speedmaster Killer. <laughs> yeah, this really killed off the Speedmaster. I mean, look at it, that ravishing dial, one of my favorite dials of all time, that sunburst blue, the Breitling logo. Oh, I just love it. Let's engage that, that chronograph. That red um, uh, arrow on the uh, that second hand. And it's always stayed on the Rios strap. This is an incredible German-made, highly underpriced, I think. Not often I say that, but handmade in Germany. It gives it that kind of almost bunt feel. I love the way it tapers. The cognac really works with the blue, in my opinion. Criticisms of this watch, it has that annoying uh, change of date. You have to go to mid midnight and then pull it back and then go forward again to whatever, I think at nine o'clock, it's very irritating. What else? Uh, obviously I'd like it smaller. It is the largest watch I have, but as you guys know, aviation watches are supposed to be a little bit larger, a bit like divers. They don't have to be, but that was generally the rule of thumb. 7750, uh, chronometer level, decorated, or, you know, tied it up to the nines, all, those, all the um, bells and whistles, a little bit tall but great, great performance. It's never missed a, a beat. Yeah, two years. I, I love the Navi. I'm a Navi timer man. I really am. I, I don't know why I put it off so long. I think I was distracted by Speedmasters. Uh, my rocky relationships with Speed... No, not rocky. I just... You know, I've settled on this. This is my favorite chronograph, I, I have to say. I love the, the V-shaped layout. My only regret is I didn't buy it sooner. I, I feel that the Navi timer doesn't get the respect it deserves. It predates the Speedmaster and the Submariner. I guess it's more of a Marmite effect because of the busyness, uh, which, you know, I, I, I absolutely adore. Um, but then again, I like the simplicity of the little Amiga. You know, I, I, I like all kinds of watches. Um, but this is unequivocally my favorite chronograph. Let's just pop it on. And there we go. Look at that. Yeah, it still fits fine to the very extremities of my wrist. But you know what? I don't care. I love it. I love it. I love looking at that dial. I get lost in that dial. Um, it's it's one of these watches that oh, you, you, you kind of get distracted. You go to look, you know check the time and then... You completely forget, and then you just end up staring at it for, for about a minute, and then you realize, what, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, what, what is the time? And I think, actually, that's part of the reason why I got rid of the chronospace. Although I love the chronospace for what it was, it wasn't giving me the same... Well, of course it's not giving me the same feeling. It's a, it's an Annie Digi watch. And I have to say, if I was filthy, stinking rich, and I had DuckTales-style money, you know, swimming in, in a bank vault full of gold, I would probably buy so many Navi timers. I'd have a Navi timer for each day of the week, all different colors. I'd love a Moon Phase one. Yeah, I'd go crazy. I'd get a gold one. You know, a, a Navi timer is, is, for me, is a watch that I would actually consider owning several of. Uh, I'd love a manual wind vintage one. Um, yeah, actually, that, that reminds me, talking about manual wind and the lack of screw down crown, you know, normal for a watch of this style. It's not the best water resistance. I don't wear this in the rain even. That and the date is it's Achilles heel. Now, I, I'll address this question as I did in the last one. If I had to pick one watch out of the eight, um, I know a lot of people would go for the GMT uh, because of its iconic status, monetary value, luxury, blah, 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 blah. I would, I would go for the Navi. That's how much of a Navi fan I am. Anyway, guys, yeah, surprising that this is now the most dominant um, part of my collection. Uh, the, yeah, I didn't expect that. I guess I like... I like aviation watches wouldn't mind adding a fleeg actually i'd get i'd get a lacquer probably who knows definitely a handheart oh handheart yeah i'd love a handheart anyway we'll discuss grails and collecting goals when i've done the last state of the collection anyway guys i'm gonna leave it there please do share which is your favorite aviation watch i'm not talking about in my collection in your collection or 
your favorite aviation watches in general, please do share it down below. Gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.